Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. So on today's episode, we're gonna be recapping a console. The one we're gonna be recapping using this cap kit right here from console five is a Nintendo 64. So it's the same Nintendo 64 that we shined up real nice in the previous episode. Without further ado, let's begin. All right, so now that we've removed the carcass off of this Nintendo 64, we're gonna go ahead and start by removing these capacitors. I'd like to start off with the same kind. So in this case, we'll go ahead and remove all the ones with the 68. I find that you can just twist these off and they come off just like that. You don't always have this luxury with all of them. Some of them may actually take a trace, so you definitely want to be careful. Now one of those is actually leaking. Uh, I don't know which one it was, but one was leaking. In fact, it might have even been more than one. It looks like this one right here that you're seeing on the camera was leaking. And there was another one over here. Let's go ahead and power up the vacuum. So I'll begin by adding some solder to every single one of these joints. That way I can easily remove the legs that have stayed on. And we're just adding new solder and scraping away the, the leg. And you're gonna wanna do that to all of these. All right, now that all of these have been cleaned up, we can go ahead and add some flux to them and install the new caps, which I would prefer to do rather than continuing because then you could end up making some mistakes. And yeah, we'll be applying flux to every single tray, well, every single pad. So we'll go ahead and start by putting our first one of these on here. Of course, uh, making sure to pay attention to polarity. And if you refer to the other capacitors on this board, you can see the orientation. So the black or negative is on the uh, square side and the rounded side has the positive, if I'm reading that correctly. So that's one side and the other side right there. And we'll be repeating this not, uh, eight more times after this, because I believe that was the count for this particular type of capacitor. I usually sit on there between five and 10 seconds to make sure there's a good joint. All right, so that's the other side there. And we're on the final capacitor here. I already partially soldered some of it on and I just need to finish the other leg. Well, I guess I forgot to solder on the other side, but uh, we'll get this side going and this side here. Uh, next on the agenda, these guys right here, the 220s. Go ahead and add some solder and remove the legs that are on here. And we'll add a little bit of flux with our easier to dispense flux tube. Almost put it in there again. Seems to happen quite often. And we'll go ahead and get this side down first. All right, and those are securely on there. I mean, these smaller ones are always a pain. 10, 16 volt. We'll remove those next. And of course, we'll add some more flux. And if you'd like a different angle on how all this gets soldered in. Now do this three more times. And we have one last one, which is C34. Yeah, I really just like how this one is sitting, but there's not much I can do about that with this small area. And there we are. All right, so we have three more to rip off right here. So that's one of them. And we'll do that two more times. So we'll add our solder to this. And we'll clean up this one as well. And the neat thing about these capacitors being smaller is I get a little bit more room to work with. Of course, you could argue I probably could use a smaller tip over here, but that's okay. Now we have these two. And the final one over here. All right, so we finished recapping it. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean up all the extra flux and any solder that might be lingering around. Then we'll go ahead and power it up and see what it's doing. All right, looks like our 64 still works. All right, we finished recapping the Nintendo 64. And of course, in our next video, I think we have a surprise for you. The next thing we'll be installing is the NN64 digital chip, which will allow HDMI output for the Nintendo 64, and it will allow it to work with modern TVs. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed this content, if you found it helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.